Hey guys, it's me, Jake, from JakeMan21642, and today I have a long overdue update video for you guys of my 2002 Subaru Outback LL Bean Edition. Um, I know I just did the video of the Mercedes recently. Everyone was commenting they wanted to see this car too and asking if it's still around, which of course it is. Um, for those of you who are new to the channel, I bought this car in September of 2020, so it will be three years with it this year, which already feels crazy, but um, my grandparents actually bought it brand new in 2001. She ended up upgrading to a Volvo XC70, which I'll actually do an update video of soon. It is overdue as well, and that was one of the more popular cars that's been on my channel recently from the family fleet. But anyway, at the time, she was about to sell this. They were even talking about donating it. Um, a shop had told them that the car needed head gaskets, which, more on that later, but I can tell you I haven't replaced the head gaskets. But, so she ended up getting a new car. I was getting sad seeing this go. I had a project car that was an absolute nightmare. Um, I don't, I think I did one video of it on the channel. But long story short, at the time I had just moved into my house, I gained another parking spot. The project was going away, and driving my dad's XC60 for the week when I moved into my house really made me kind of want something with a little bit more ground clearance, something with some cargo space. When I had the XC60, in the middle of moving, it was nice going back and forth to Home Depot and stuff like that. Just throw the trunk open, drop the seats down, and you can haul pretty much anything you want. Of course, me being me, I am not a crossover person, and there, I was kind of looking at CRVs and stuff like that, but mainly was looking at wagons, and things just kind of lined up to where I ended up paying 500 bucks for this. Originally, I was just gonna kind of give this car a Viking funeral and just drive it until it blew up. And then it actually ended up being kind of reliable. Kind of thought about flipping it. I had an offer from someone on it, but it really ended up being a reliable car. I really enjoyed driving it, which I can't believe I'm saying. And where I live, this is just such a great car to have. So anyway, I'll kind of just go over everything because it's been such a long time since you guys have seen this car. Um, I do feel a little guilty because this was a one owner garage baby when I got it. But at the same time, they almost donated it. This car definitely would have been in a junkyard by now if I didn't end up with it. So yes, it's clean, it's rust free, but it's also an O2 Subaru with almost 100,000 miles. So. I use it, and again, like I said in the Mercedes video, I've just accepted at this point that I live in a city where it's pretty hard to keep a car nice. So there's battle scars here and there. A lot of them it has picked up uh, in my ownership. But again, even my grandparents are just happy that this car is still around and that it's still keeping me safe and treating me well. So outside, this is my favorite and I think the most appropriate color on the LLB Bean Edition this beautiful Timberland green exterior. And then of course it's the two-tone with the gold cladding, gold bumpers, gold wheels, all of that was L.O. Bean edition. You can see the badge right there. And it it's kind of corny. I mean, it's the typical uh, early 2000s, late 90s clothing and car manufacturer mashup, but my grandparents always thought that was super cool. They really did take phenomenal care of this car and I'm trying to keep that going. So outside, you can see it definitely needs a good buff and wax and all of that. Um, again, this is my beater car. But otherwise outside things I've done, obviously tinted all of the windows and you can see even with the sun beating down on it right now, you can barely see inside of this car. So. 20% on the front, and then I did 5% all the way around on the back. Especially living in the city, this car spends a lot of time street parked. I definitely wanted to make sure no one could see inside of the trunk. One thing it did get fairly recently is a new set of tires. So before this car had a set of Goodyear, I think they were like comfort assurances or something. Um, one of them ended up getting a pretty big gash in it. And if you know anything about Subarus, if you can't really replace tires, you definitely can't replace just a single tire. Sometimes you can get away with replacing them in pairs, but the Goodyears were already sort of mismatched, so I went ahead and got a new set of tires, and I got an awesome deal on a set of Pirelli P4 All Seasons, and I'm pretty happy with them so far. Definitely will say these aren't 
the greatest in the rain. They definitely, or at least they're different than the Goodyear's where the cars definitely feels a little more prone to understeer, but they're still fantastic tires considering I paid like 86 bucks a piece for them brand new. Uh, they are P2 2560 R16s. I really want to get a set of Michelin cross climates for this car, but it seems like they're just now coming out with 16s. They weren't at the time, but happy with these so far. I've driven them in the snow once and no complaints. And that's another thing too, is this was kind of, the original plan was this was going to be my cold weather kind of snow beater uh, car, which I've driven it in the snow plenty of times and it's been phenomenal. We have not had a single snow day this year. We got a little bit one morning and then by the time I left for work, it had already melted. So haven't really gotten to use this thing to its full potential this year. This thing is probably the most unstoppable car that I have ever driven in the snow. Other things outside I've added, I did put the roof basket on the car. Um, got this on Facebook Marketplace for like, I think 220 bucks. It originally came off of a 4Runner, but fits this car perfect. And I definitely think it uh, adds to the looks of it. So as I mentioned uh, earlier with the battle scars too, yes, that, uh, that did happen. I mean, the hood on this car already wasn't in the greatest shape to begin with. There's definitely kind of like some chipping and flaking and then just trash in the clear coat that I've even tried to clay and buff and it really just won't come out. So keeping my out for a new junkyard hood. But... See the front license plate has definitely served its purpose. And once again, this is why I leave the front plates on most of my nice cars. Um, up front, this is one thing that kind of started recently. The clear coats definitely flaked off a little in front of the grill, which again, just in the South, kind of old Japanese cars with thin paint. You, you get stuff like this. I think it's at a point though, where it's still saveable. I'm really going to try to sand it down and re-clear it. And it doesn't need to be perfect, but at least look a little bit better. After I got the car, um, I did put a set of Depot headlights in it. A lot of people aren't fans of Depot, but for 90 bucks for a brand new set of headlights, which they don't even make OEM ones for these cars anymore. So I think they look good enough. And I did pop a set of LED bulbs in, and then I've got the yellow fog lights as well. That was like one of the first things I did to the car, and I love the way it looks. But I figured I'm getting blinded by everyone else's LED headlights, so I really don't feel bad putting them in this car. And they definitely have improved. Anyway, so we'll go ahead, step inside. <laughs> and inside you can see this is the typical L.L. Bean interior. So this is the beautiful two-tone leather. But by two-tone, I mean beige on slightly darker beige. But still cool, pretty unique, and for almost 190,000 miles, I mean, these seats really are holding up pretty well. I mean, a little bit of bolster wear, but again, 190,000 miles. Very nice, too, full-power seat in an O2. And so we'll go ahead and start it up. One thing I'm very proud of, I do still have the original keys as well as both of the original fobs for this car with the nice 90s orange and uh, blue buttons. Let's start it and see as it sits at the moment, getting very close to 190,000 miles. And starts up nice and strong, which it should because it just got a brand new starter. I'll go ahead, pop the hood, give some updates of under there. So you can hear 189,000 miles, car still starts up, runs flawlessly, still idles very nice and smooth. And under the hood, this is the H6 3.0, so your Subaru 3 liter flat 6 cylinder, definitely very nice um, power bump over the 2.5 liter 4 cylinder. This is not a fast or even a quick car by any means, but still very very nice and it's definitely unique having a flat six all-wheel drive station wagon i can't remember the last time i made the vid a video of this car or not i'd replaced the alternator but uh this is the second alternator that i put on the car um replaced it once at the time my s60 was out of commission so i was daily driving this car and uh the alternator went out on me in traffic i ended up replacing it in the parking lot at work with just like a generic O'Reilly's one because it was all I could get my hands on. And that ended up crapping out about six months later. It also fried the battery and took that with it. 
which that kind of leads me to, I've been chasing intermittent starting and charging issues with this car almost the entire time I've had it, and I'm pretty sure I finally have it sorted out. But anyway, so one thing it got was a brand new Mitsubishi alternator, which Mitsubishi is actually the OEM. The original one with like 185,000 miles that I took off had Mitsubishi stamped on the bottom of it. So that seems to have served me pretty well. I'm not sure if you can see it on camera. It's that newer shiny metal piece down there, but the car did get a new starter recently because I was getting an intermittent no start, which I think the starter was on its way out too, but replaced that. And then the car again was acting like it wasn't charging in traffic which led me to what I probably should have replaced to begin with, but the battery thermals, which I need to do a better job because they've been replaced so many times, there's like not much wire left. So I had to use that crappy style on that one. And then it does have the better style on the positive terminal. You can see at some point, someone put one of these on the positive and they had to cut the boot a bit around it. But that one was basically entirely rust, and since then, I've not had any issues with the car. I mentioned earlier in the video, my grandparents ended up getting rid of the car because they were told it needed a head gasket. Um, I've said it before in videos, everything I did, but basically the car just had a lot of really bad oil and coolant leaks, so fixed all of those. It's got, well, a couple of years old now, but new radiator hoses, changed the coolant, changed the radiator cap, had the wrong one on it. These cars cooling systems can definitely be a little tricky so made sure I flushed it, got all the right stuff on there. Radiator on this car isn't brand new but it's been replaced as well. Um, not during my ownership but I've got the record for that. Otherwise under here I need to do spark plugs soon which I'm dreading because you have to take a lot off to get to them but need to do that. You can hear the compressor cycling on and off. The air conditioning still works perfect. Um, I've done every oil change on this car myself in the time I've had it. Typically, I always run synthetic. Typically try to change it three, but sometimes we'll go 5,000 miles. But either way, take care of all of that myself. Give it good oil, of course. One thing I did do a little ricey. Drill holes in the air box, but it did make it sound pretty cool since it is a flat six cylinder. Otherwise though, I mean, like I said, this car has been a tank. It really, really has treated me well in my ownership. Um, like I said, this engine may not be the most powerful. It doesn't get the best gas mileage, and it will blow up if you don't put premium in it, but it's it makes for a unique ownership experience. This car, I really tried to get my grandma into a newer car for a long time, and I kind of was never the biggest fan of this car, but after owning it, I really love this thing. I really appreciate the character it has, and... I understand the appeal of these Subarus now. A uh, couple other things outside. Um, I've done the brakes on the front once already. Um, I put cheap rotors on it, so they're kind of warped again already. And I need to do the caliper on this side. I have it. I've just been too lazy to replace it. On this side, I have replaced uh, the brake caliper. It actually started dragging very bad, so I got that done. Like I said, pads and rotors have been done as well. The rear pads and rotors were done not too long before I bought it, but I think it's time for those again because they're probably cheap brakes and city car, so they haven't had an easy life. But I'm definitely starting to feel some pulsation through the pedals, so time for those. I did replace the struts on it, and I put a set of Monroe Quick Struts, which I've always been told were the gold standard on it. And I would be lying if I said they are not horrible. They honestly make me miss the 185,000 mile struts that came off of this car. They're bouncy. If it's cold outside, they're noisy. They're only maybe a year and a half old and they're already just getting to the point where they kind of feel blown out. So I'm gonna ride them out, but eventually this car will need a new set of wheel bearings on the front have also been done. That was one of the few things on this car I have had done at a shop just because I was driving it a lot at the time. I did not feel like doing it myself. I was going on vacation, dropped it off at my buddy's shop and they had it taken care of by the time I got back. Go ahead, take a quick look around the interior. I might actually have to flip around uh, and get out of the sun in a second here. See, I did add a set of the Subaru OEM all with their floor mats, which are very nice since I have a gravel driveway. They definitely serve their purpose. So 
inside of this car, you can see I did end up flipping around just so we're not shooting directly into the sun. But everything looks basically the same as when I got it. Um, the wood grain steering wheel, which this is the factory Momo steering wheel that uh, these cars came with. Wood grain up top and the nice perforated leather on the edges. Still holding up very well. You can see nice and snappy power steering in this car as well. This surprised me and also made me understand the appeal of these Outbacks is the driving dynamics of this car are really not that bad for what it is. Um, once you get past the body roll, this car handles really well. The steering feels like an old Honda. It's just snappy and hydraulic. So you have the wood grain accent on the bottom as well. But overall, it's a pretty fun car to drive, especially it just eats up bad roads. I've taken this thing, you know, the Mercedes is awesome for road trips to the beach. This thing is awesome for road trips to the mountains. Um, it can go up and down dirt, gravel roads, no problem at all. Even around the city, it's wonderful because it's sprung pretty soft. So it still just eats up bad roads. And then of course, in any kind of weather, Subaru all wheel drive and Pirelli tires are not going to let you down. Nice too, cause on trips, like I love to check out antique stores, vintage shops, stuff like that. So I can just drop the seats down and I've got plenty of room to do uh, stereotypical Subaru hipster activities. Inside these Outbacks for the time as well had a really nice interior for what they are. All up top on the door is padded material. And now over time, a lot of the surfaces in this car, the padding will recede. And since this one's been so long in a garage, it's been spared from most of that. The one rough spot is right here, which this is why I'm so OCD about putting a sunshade up now, is the padding started to go here and then eventually it did crack and a little piece flaked off. Even though this is my beater, I kind of want to get that fixed just because because you stare right at it and you know i remember this car when the interior was nice and didn't have that i may even try repairing it myself but otherwise the rest of the panel is holding up okay the dashboard itself is nice and padded it's starting to get a little warped up there but again all of these things i'm complaining about most of these cars did in like 2007 here so this one has held up really well on the door, armrest is padded. Um, right here tends to get a little gross getting in and out. Um, it's a perfect example of why beige should not be used for a handle. You have your wood grain around here, which Subaru claims this is burl walnut. I'm not so sure about that, but it's definitely period correct. I've come to appreciate it. It makes the interior feel slightly more upscale. In the middle, you can see gas gauge, um, speedometer, tachometer, and then your engine temperature. Turn the lights on. They do have kind of a cool green backlight to them. You can see, like I said, 189,298 miles at the moment. I got the car with about 177 on it. Um, typically, I put about five or 6,000 miles a year on it which is not bad considering I have three cars. I work in the industry, so I drive work cars all the time. And uh, also too, most of the stuff I need is within a 10 mile radius of my house. Even at this point, my commute is seven miles each way. So not bad. I mean, it's a great spare car to have around. And like I said, I really, it really, really has made me grow to appreciate Subaru. They, this car has really held up to, uh, me not exactly being easy on it. As someone that at one point would have talked someone out of buying a Subaru, I really have to say at this point that they build a hell of a car. And also too, I mean, the original plan when I got the Mercedes, that this was going to be my daily and then the Mercedes would be the more fun, you know, weekend drop top car, which I kind of end up driving the Mercedes everywhere just because it's so comfortable, like I said in the update video I did about it. And then also too, they both need premium fuel and then this thing gets straight up truck gas mileage. Around the city, I usually average 18 to 20. Like 20 is pretty good for this car and it's premium gas. So Mercedes kind of ends up going everywhere because of that. I'm not too mad at it. I mean, this will definitely last a lot longer, but I am trying to drive it more. Usually this time of the year, this is the car that's used more just because of the weather and not even necessarily snow. Just this is such a great cold weather car, but it's honestly been a super mild winter so far. You can see, I'm sure you see little bits of it everywhere. The car is covered in pollen just because of this 
false spring we're having at the moment. Otherwise, they're around the interior on this side. Fog light controls, cruise control, which is total 90s style. I've had some friends of mine that are a little younger than me make me feel old with this, but you've got the main relay there, and then your actual cruise control paddle on the wheel there. And it's nice, it makes me feel so at home because most of the cars I've owned up until now were from this time period. It's still the old school cable operated throttle. So when you have cruise engaged, you actually feel the uh, gas pedal move under your foot, which I just, I love that. Like I said, I feel right at home. In the middle, you can see two air vents up top. I did add this uh, Spotify um, car thing, literally what these are called. And I like it because it's kind of a throwback to the old uh, satellite radios that everyone had on their dash in the 2000s. But it's cool. I mean, me being an audiophile, it definitely seems to act as an amplifier a little bit. It's made the music a little bit louder through this stereo. But uh, I was kind of disappointed. I thought the way it would work is my phone Bluetooths to this, and then I could just plug the uh, aux cable from my tape deck into it but I still need to be connected to my little Bluetooth module there and this at the same time for it to work. Sometimes it has trouble connecting and things like that as well, but it's still pretty cool for 30 bucks. I'm not mad at it, um, especially in something like this where I'm not replacing the stereo until it breaks. So nice to have, I tried to tuck the wire and clean it up. And that brings me to another thing too, the stereo in this car is just fantastic. I know I've said it in other videos, but I know I've said it in previous videos of this car, but this stereo is fantastic for what it is. I have not replaced any of the speakers, obviously the head unit or anything. Um, this isn't even the top of the line. You could actually get these in the VDC model, um, which was basically an LL Bean edition with traction control, but also did offer a Macintosh stereo. But this one I believe I read online is Alpine, and I believe the Macintosh was also Alpine, just with a different faceplate. But the speakers, everything stock, they sound great. Um, even kind of bass heavy music, they can handle it. So I've definitely left it alone. Um, I learned with all of my other cars from this time period, when you start replacing speakers and ripping panels apart, it's gonna rattle. And this surprisingly does not. So left that alone, I'm happy with it. Um, I actually have seven CD slots in this car, which back in the day, this would have been ballin'. This thing does have the optional uh, six disc changer from the factory. And then you still have the single CD up here as well as your tape deck, which I've run a tape to aux, to this little Tautronics Bluetooth adapter. And uh, it's nice, I can make and receive phone calls through the stereo. Um, obviously, like I said, I've got the car thing so I can stream music, um, works very well. Very 2000s old people car. This thing does have a weather band, which I'm not sure if that would even work. I actually do use the tape deck in this car. I even picked these up from a record store by my house. I mean, how can you have a car with a tape deck and not have a Spin Doctors cassette? But also got a bunch of other classics. And I mean, it's a nice, high quality stereo from back in the day. So cassettes actually sound pretty good on it. Down below there, you have uh, my little power splitter. Um, right there, you can see powers the Bluetooth as well as the car thing. And I just got a good old iPhone charger as well. Up here, always thought this was cool. In the LL Bean, you do get the little H6 badge right there. And then this, nothing special, is just a four-speed automatic. And yeah, it's a four-speed automatic. It's definitely not the smoothest. It's actually already been rebuilt once, which is kind of typical of these. They do have problems, but uh, even new, this was just not the smoothest transmission. And from what I've read online, they were all like that. Back here, to have seat heaters, very nice in the LL Bean edition, and they do still work. The low setting kind of does nothing, so I keep it always on high. But only the bottom on the passenger side is heated, but bottom and backrest on the driver's side are. Armrest in the middle, storage in there, of course. And then your parking brake, nice and old school. Up top, this one does have the dual sunroofs, which again, back in the day, would have been a ballin' feature. Again, too, another thing my friends make me feel old about because people will get in here and be like, oh, I've never seen that before. But this one just tilts, and then this one will actually tilt and open completely. One thing, too, typical Subaru, and I always leave them closed because of this, they're 
untinted glass. So that's the reason they kind of never get used unless it's at night. I mean, again, also I own a convertible. So if I really want that wind through my face feeling, but usually if I end up using this one, I'll just kind of crack it like that. And it still will vent. Um, you can see your lights up here, which I did replace with LED bulbs. Same goes for the light in the middle right there. Auto dimming rear view mirror with your compass built in, which I have replaced this, the original one the car had kind of delaminated like they all do. Um, I went to the junkyard just looking for a manual one because I figured all of them would have done it, but this one has a couple lines in it, but for the like 10 bucks I paid for it, it works. And uh, surprisingly in the three years I've had the car it has not delaminated like the other one. Visors with vanity mirrors. You can see the lights have gone out on that one. They do still work on this side. And then again, like it's a pretty well used car. Little things here and there like try to tuck those straps up just to kind of keep a cleaner look but again my grandmother used this car another thing I love is she was too afraid to ever put stickers on the car so they kind of ended up in random places like that handles up top oh, we'll go ahead show the rest of the car really quick heated mirrors as well which is another nice for the mid 2000s thing and I like that they actually have a button where you can turn them on and off and some storage down below there. And just again, with this car being a survivor, a one owner, I love all the little things here and there that have still stuck around on it. And around the rear, another thing I forgot to mention, I did pick up a set of JDM taillights on eBay. These were surprisingly hard to find, but I think they give the car a little bit of a cleaner look. I definitely need to wet sand this panel to kind of even it up a little bit more. But I was tired of just blowing through sets of taillights because the seals always go bad. So apparently these JDM ones are a little bit better with that. <sighs> another thing I forgot to show is another battle scar. This was uh, one in the morning on a single lane mountain road trying to turn around and find a cabin. I scraped a rock pretty good, but honestly, for how horrible that sounded, the car actually held up pretty well. Inside the trunk, definitely could use some new struts, but they actually hold it up. You just kind of have to push it all the way up at this point. You can see the cargo cover does work perfectly, which is something I'm very proud of. The one when I got this car was stuck, but I found a new old stock one on eBay. It works perfectly. And you can see, I need to clean the trunk out, but this thing kind of does also act as a tool shed just because it's in my driveway. So when I'm working on cars, things kind of just end up getting thrown in here. See, but the headrests, as well as uh, new brakes for my mom's car. Thank you, Blake, for those. I still need to actually put them on the car. This is the old caliper off of this car. Another cool thing that's kind of survived with this car that was original is this Subaru Ultimate Cargo Organizer. It even has the original promotion material, as you can see on it. But my grandma used the hell out of this thing. You even have little nets you can put up to divide it and works pretty well. It also will completely fold down. These pop out and then it will fold down and act as kind of a cargo floor protector and just give you a flat load floor. And then as well, underneath of it, you have the all-weather trunk liner in this car. And again, that's why I love having a wagon is just because this is such a awesome cargo hauler. Even without flipping the back seat all the way down, I mean, they're just super simple to release and drop down and you can still load so much stuff into the car. Also, another thing too, and the owner's manual says this, the front seat, when you slide it forward, pop the headrest out and lean it all the way back, will meet up with this seat to form a perfect bed. But stepping in, the, this seat is back all the way. And I mean, I fit, but like I said, definitely not somewhere I'd want to cross the country in. It also sits up very high compared to the front seats, which Kind of a typical Subaru thing. You do get very nice thigh support at least. And up top, as I mentioned, that sunroof. 
see you again. Me and my hauler, little things have happened here and there. And up front passenger seat, which held up a little bit better than the driver's side. Once again, with the LL Bean badging too. And glove box, nothing special there. Nice touch I always forget for an O2 is you do get a couple lights down below. But yeah, guys, I know I was overdue for an update video, so I thought I would film one. Even though this isn't, you know, the most enthusiast car in the world, this thing has just been a rock-solid, reliable beater, and I have no plans of letting it go anywhere. So let me know what you guys would like to see on the channel. I'll definitely try to get some more videos out, maybe some repair videos on it, since it is a 20-year-old car at this point. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Any questions, comments, anything like that, drop them down below.